President Vanya, President Bada Siddiqui, members of the Pakistan Medical Association, ladies and gentlemen. In the 10 years or so which have passed since I announced my intention of building a teaching hospital and nursing school in Karachi, I have been fortunate enough to travel to many parts of the world visited innumerable medical institutions, large and small, talked to countless members of your profession, to deans and professors, hospital administrators, health ministers and their civil servants, students, nurses and paramedicals. One has only to list these categories to realize what a very large number of people are directly or indirectly concerned in the maintaining of the health of the human race. What has struck me most forcefully in these encounters, especially in recent years, is the degree of self-questioning to be found in the world of medicine today, at least as much in the industrialized nations of the North as among the developing countries of the South. The questions are prompted partly by the constantly rising cost of curative medicine, to an extent that even the wealthiest nations are finding it difficult to support their national health insurance schemes. They also concern the ability of modern societies to organize and manage their health services in such a way that the whole population derives benefits from the limited resources available and not just a small, accessible and relatively well-to-do minority. This in turn prompts still further questions on the relevance of the curricula at our medical and nursing schools and the relationship of the big centers of medical teaching to the urban and rural communities which surround them. Still more questions follow. The cost and still more the objectives of medical research. The cost of drugs and particularly in the developing world, how to discourage the flight of scarce, expensive medical talents to the wealthier countries overseas. The debate is unending. And because it is increasingly urgent, it is becoming a matter of grave concern. As one who is about to launch a fairly substantial new medical institution in a country such as Pakistan, I am inevitably involved personally and directly. I do not claim for a minute, of course, to have found the answers to such complex questions. But it is le at least apparent to me that we need to give much more thought in future to the destiny of the frontline troops in the battle for health, the doctors themselves. Keeping in mind that the industrialized countries are asking themselves the very same questions and are as much in the dark as we are we must determine for ourselves in our own special circumstances how our doctors should be trained, how they should be utilized and motivated once they qualify, how they can be provided a structured career development which obtains the maximum national value from a scarce and precious human resource. That is the crux of the problem. When a doctor qualifies from a medical school, he or she is like any other young graduate out of university. He needs time to apply his mainly theoretical knowledge in practical clinical work. He has reached a stage where his natural talents and acquired skills can be developed in any number of different directions. This one would assume is the time when a well-managed health service could most easily accommodate him, give him the broad practical experience he needs, 
and motivate him to reach the more specialized areas of his profession. At present in this country, as in many others, there is a tremendous pressure on the places available at quite a large number of medical schools. Thousands of newly trained doctors will be looking for work to do and careers to develop. What is the ac academic quality of these men and women? Are we ready for them? How do they perceive their relationship with nursing and the paramedical staff? Have we thought out sufficiently at the professional and governmental levels how we can best utilize this valuable human resource for the greatest benefit of the nation as a whole? Mr. President, members of the Pakistan Medical Association, I am deeply grateful for the honor you have paid to me tonight in awarding me an honorary membership of your association. I am equally conscious that I have asked a great many questions which will very soon become my own ultimate responsibility to try and answer. I sincerely hope, therefore, that my honorary membership entitles me to seek your help and advice. I shall not fail to do this, and I shall value it deeply. Thank you.